let's be honest, like what is the government actually good at besides taking your money and using it foolishly? I have a question from some guy that wrote in. He's like, mm. uh, hi, Dan, I have a few questions. What the hell, <laughs> what the hell is going on with Canada's real estate market? What happens if you initially buy a house, for example, $1 million, and now, uh, thanks to the crisis, the value of your house is much less than $1 million. What is going to happen in Canada? Well. This happens all the time. Yeah. This isn't the first time it's happened. Uh, so, number one, if you truly couldn't afford the million-dollar home at a higher interest rate, you may very well lose it. Now... What I happen to think is the banks in Canada are much more savvy dealing with situations like this. And I think when the majority of mortgages that were underwritten during the time of the height in the real estate market, I do think that they're going to, you're going to start seeing the Bank of Canada or not the Bank of Canada, but something rolling out or the government, or whatever, rolling out. Uh, mechanisms for when uh, the majority of people have to refi on mm. their properties, there's going to be some sort of tool that will allow them to not lose their home. You have to understand, especially Canadian banks, they don't want to be landlords and they don't want to take your property back. They will lose more money than if you kind of peter by mm -hmm. or introduce maybe say, a 40 year am you know 35 year am 30 year am because the majority of ams in canada are 25 or the longest so i think you'll start seeing that before before you see a mass exodus of primary residences uh that were purchased during the height of the real estate market that's what i think will happen i also don't think that the uh the interest rate hikes will last much longer mm -hmm. i think it's accomplishing what the government wants to wants it to accomplish. I think the way that everything's been done is was extremely foolish in terms of how quick they've been moving. I think I think that the response for how quick that they were moving is necessary. I think that the incentives that the government put out during the you know the last two to three years oh, was yeah. extremely foolish, and the interest rate hikes are a result of the foolishness and monetary foolish policies that the government put in place prior to the interest rate hikes yeah. and inflation, significant inflation. You're naive to think this wasn't going to happen based on the volume of money that was pumped into the market by the feds yeah. over the last two to three years. You are absolutely naive and foolish to think that this was not going to happen. It's almost, I almost find it comical, the fact that people are shocked this yeah, is happening. It's crazy. I saw I saw a thing on Twitter today where somebody was what's going on? I can't believe like well what do you mean what's going on? Mm -hmm. The government just gave out like trillions and trillions of dollars and pumped it into the market. When you do that, yeah. You deflate the value of our currency. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there's just more money. It means that you're putting more money into the economy and deflating what's already there. When you have more an abundance of something, it devalues it. Mm -hmm. So when something's devalued, there's more value in it. So it takes more of that value, right? Of that thing, yep. which is fiat currency to buy shit. Yeah. So you're, the, the, the price is, the, the value of stuff, this is what I, I think people have a hard time understanding. I think people have a hard time understanding inflation. Things don't cost more necessarily you need more money to buy that same thing. That's what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. that, that's it. it. It's not that this computer here, this computer, this computer doesn't now cost more. What's actually happening is each you need of, more each money. Each one of your dollars has gone down in terms of its purchasing power. You need more money to buy this computer. Yeah. That is it. The computer doesn't actually cost more money. You need more money to buy the computer now. That's it, because there's been more money pumped to the economy and it devalued the money that was needed to buy this computer previously when it was $1,000, now it's 1500 When you pump more money into the economy, now it's $1,500. It's not that the computer is worth $1,500. It's because you need more fucking money to buy it. Mm -hmm. That's it. So I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding inflation, and that's what's actually going on here. So 
I think some people might, yeah, lose their homes or, okay, this is what, three things. Number one, I think people are going to have to restructure their finan- uh, financial situations, you know, maybe they can't go out to eat every night. Maybe they can't, they got to stop buying Starbucks every fucking day. Maybe they got to like, you know, stop going on so many vacations or doing whatever the fuck, right? Maybe they can't be eating caviar every night. So, you know, stuff like that, right? Then number two, yeah, maybe some people will lose their homes because they've been financially irresponsible. Mm-hmm. And then number three, I do think that the government will put, will institute certain things in order to curb the sheer number and volume of people that would otherwise lose their homes. Because mm-hmm. back in 2008, 2009, in the U.S. specifically, <clears throat> let's say that somebody were to have they, they purchased a, a house way over asking price. They went in on a variable rate mortgage. And let's say, for example, during 2008, 2009, uh, the variable, variable rate hit the trigger point. They ended up like uh, the value of the property decreased to lower than what the value of the property was. They had to refinance. And all of a sudden, they were underwater on their loan. And then not only that, but especially according to that, uh, that one movie that popularized this whole thing, you had essentially people buying multiple houses under this, right? So it, it, it essentially led to people being underwater on their mortgages so quickly. In 2008, 2009 in Canada, because obviously you were investing in real mm-hmm. estate during that time, I actually not, a, like, I don't know this. How did, like, how did Canada curb the real estate recession in 08, 09 compared to the US? Well, it didn't exist here. So we weren't doing the same shit. Okay, so yeah. it, just, it just didn't have the same no, subprime mortgages. No, one million percent not. <laughs> okay, it did not. That's not what happened here. So, so in in two uh, now, our economy follows the U.S. Mm-hmm. right, but. I'm going to relate this back to like Southwest Ontario specifically Windsor. The reason why the economy in Windsor was in the shit was because of the automotive industry was being taken down by that financial crisis. It wasn't, it mm-hmm. wasn't because of the financial crisis or mortgage crisis in Canada. It was, it was ice. It was more isolated here. You know, was there, was there fallout from the U S financial crisis in 2008 in Canada? Yeah, I'm sure to some extent, but we didn't have the same, our banking system was much more heavily regulated than the States. The States was just on, it was like a fucking free for all. Mm-hmm. They were just doing whatever they want with subprime mortgages. So, it, it was like, it, I don't even know if you had to have a pulse to get a fucking mortgage back then. That was the problem, right? Yeah. That wasn't happening in Canada. You still had to qualify for stuff. Was it maybe a little loose? Because again, sometimes we follow the US. Was mm-hmm. it a little bit looser than it is now? Yeah, potentially, yeah. I don't exactly remember to be quite honest, but yeah. that's not what was going on in Canada. It was, mm. it was not the same type of scenario. It was kind of like, it, again, whenever something happens in the US, it kind of, it, it, it it uh it spider webs out right yeah. or it, now in, in, into the even the the global economy right yeah so you you don't you don't see the same shit exactly happening here in Canada especially in two thousand eight but it, two different two very different banking systems mm-hmm. now arguably inflation right now in Canada is worse than the U S mm-hmm. I don't know the exact numbers off the top yeah. of my head but from little bits that I'm reading and what I'm hearing is that inflation is worse in Canada because uh, Canadian policies pumped way more money during two, uh, 2020, 2021 yeah. than the U- U.S. did per capita. capita. Yeah. Right. Now, because of that, what, how do you think maybe this recession that we're in um, will compare to in Canada versus, versus the U.S.? Do you think Canada will be worse because we have had higher inflation? Because this is an inflation-based recession, yeah. arguably. Yeah, so right? what I do think is, yes, I think it'll last longer. I, I think it'll last longer because the U.S. is based off a capitalistic free market economy. Mm-hmm. And I think that, although it's not 100%, that style of economy will typically recorrect itself mm-hmm. quicker than a socialist-style economy. And because of that, we'll see probably a longer, you know, lull in the market. Mm. And it just kind of is what it is. And if you really look at, like, consider this, for for example. Take a look at all of the more democratic socialist states in the U.S., cities, countries. Look at all the Commonwealth countries in the, in the world. How's their real estate doing? What's their real estate values like? Like, they're just way ahead of the curve. Like, we're very much following suit. We have some, like Vancouver, Toronto, like that shit is going crazy. Mm-hmm. Like the, the real estate price is there and that's because of poor uh, monetary policy and policy overall. 
And when you don't have a free market capitalist economy, what ends up happening is you, you, you do not, the advantages of a, of a, of a capitalistic free market economy is you encourage competition, which increases quality and reduces price. Mm -hmm. That's what competition does. And that's the key to a free market capitalistic country. That's why I don't agree with people that don't agree with a capitalistic and free market economy because everybody wins. The prices get driven down from competition and the, the quality of everything increases because of the competition, right? So, so if you, if you simply look at those, if you take a look at that style of governance across North America and even across the world, take a look at it. China, what's going on with their shit? Like what's going on with Australia? What's going on in England? Like Canada, Vancouver, like all, New York, California, like what's going on? Chicago, like what's going on with the real estate values there? Like seriously, they're fucking egregious. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you take a look at that and, and they don't have that style of, you know, a free market kind of uh, governance and, and capitalistic mindset, right? They, 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 they have a lot of government intervention and, you know, let's be honest, like what is the government actually good at besides taking your money and using it foolishly? <laughs> Like seriously, like at the end of the day, can we be, let's be mm -hmm. honest here. So <clears throat> when you, you know, when you ask like, what do I actually think is going to happen with, uh, with respect to, you know, Canadian real estate, Canadian real estate, I think it's going to continue to run wild. You know, we might see, this might be a quick lull in the market. If you take a look at the, the eighties on a, the housing index versus uh, interest rates, mm -hmm. you see a little dip, very little dip. And then just fucking shoots right back up that's what i think is going to happen again same shit we're not going to i don't think we're going to see like interest rates as high like high teens and teens mm -hmm. in canada i'll be surprised if we do to be quite honest but i don't think we will mm -hmm. um and would so you I, change your in investing strategy at all if in uh if rates did actually hit high teens no no maybe more private mortgages I, 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 I do the exact same thing that I'm doing now because at the end of the day, you, you, again, you can't have high house values with high interest rates. Mm -hmm. You'll have lower housing values with higher interest rates and vice versa. High values with low interest rates, right? So it's, the market will have to correct itself. It's just like a, it's like a counterbalance, right? Mm -hmm. Like when one goes up, one will, one will come down. So I think you just, you, you, you still buy real estate during any point in time in the market. I think, I think the strategy when you're buying real estate and interest rates are very high, that real estate becomes a longer hold play. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it becomes a, long, a longer hold play is because in the short term, the interest rates will be high, which will obviously restrict return. Mm -hmm. But over the long term, rates will come down. So, so you want to hold it enough so that you're buying it at a depressed value because of high interest rates. But as interest rates come down, you're still holding that property for the same purchase price that you bought it for, say, you know, five years ago, mm -hmm. coming down from the height of interest rates. Now you own it for another five years, call it. So for a term of 10, mm -hmm. when interest rates are coming down to a reasonable rate again, which should be around maybe four, four and a half percent. So if they're at eight, you bought it at eight, you bought the property at a million bucks, right? After five years, maybe the value of the property, uh, you know, at a 4% interest rates, call it 2 million bucks, but you still only purchased it for one, but you're holding it for 10. That's what I would do. I would, I would approach real estate investing more of like a long-term play. So that, that's actually one of the things that I've been theoretically going over in my mind is... <clears throat> um, holding real estate longer in Coachwood Capital, but still only going in at a five-year term. So pulling investors for 10 years, five or seven to 10 years versus like a five-year term because we want to hold that property 
for a longer period of time, but we want to refi after, say, the three to five year mark mm. because I don't believe that rates will be that high after three to five years. Yeah. So you buy it now for a really good value, right? Over the course of time, maybe the initial you know, three years, three to five years of returns have been restricted. At that point in time, you refi, mm -hmm. and then you still hold it for another five years, mm -hmm. And then now the now the the rate of return is just skyrocketing because of the purchase price was was lower, right? Initially, mm -hmm. that's what I think is something that we should consider for Coachwood Capital mm -hmm. is pivoting that way.